Greetings, I very much regret not being able to be with you for this important decision. There can be no doubt that migrant rights, issues for migrant workers, human rights, labour rights, these issues remain central and unresolved in the 21st century and that must be redressed. If you gathered all the migrant workers together, then in fact they would make up about the fifth most populous nation. Workers who leave their own country, sometimes permanently, sometimes temporarily, too many of them abused, denied rights, but to actually contribute both socially and economically to the countries of other people, or indeed to their adopted nations for those who take up residency and citizenship. We have a central obligation to these people, these brothers and sisters who work alongside of us everywhere. For the trade union, it's simple. A worker is a worker is a worker wherever they are in the world and they deserve equal treatment. Sadly, as the UN leaders sit down this year to look again at the question of migration, we are still fighting the very central issue to say to the UN, you have a core responsibility. Leaders can't outsource their responsibility. They can't simply say, we'll set up the Global Forum on, on Migration and Development, which has made no progress on fundamental issues such as rights, and will simply receive uh, reports. Internationally, nationally, at regional level, leaders must take responsibility for collective action, for coordinated action around the rights of migrant workers. You can't do this at the national level alone, although at the national level, all nations must respect the conventions, both the UN Convention and the ILO conventions that drive workers' rights. There are in fact new conventions, which while they're not simply for migrant workers, if you go to the ILO Convention on Domestic Workers, then of course the majority of domestic workers have a migrant and a female face. We want these conventions ratified. We want national governments to take responsibility for establishing the laws that actually provide for rights, for uh, justice in terms of fair wages and conditions, and of course for appropriate dispute settling mechanisms. But regionally, more must be done. Under a global environment, if we don't see the regional connections between markets and therefore the labour market, then governments acting together can't deal effectively with the rights of workers unless they're committed to do just that. And frankly, in my own region in the Asia Pacific, governments could do much more for workers, indeed, of course, for refugees and asylum seekers. There must be fundamental rights. No worker can be abused. No worker can be excluded from fair wages and conditions, from collective bargaining, from a decent minimum wage, from social protection and uh, national or regional groups of leaders avoid their responsibility. We've got work to do. Of course, we also know that there are some areas where we have a fundamental struggle for even the most basic rights. Our global campaign on Qatar is actually about telling a country that they cannot exploit 1.4 million workers, migrant workers today. These workers live in squalor, in labour camps. Your sons or daughters, you would not allow to be in that environment. Yet the sons and daughters of Nepali workers, of Filipino workers, of Indian workers, of, of African workers, around the world, we see migrants flocking to Qatar at a desperation to earn an income so they can contribute to the dignity of life for their families back home. And what do they find? A 21st century slave state. So we've said to FIFA, who awarded Qatar the World Cup, no World Cup in Qatar without workers' rights. We've said to the Qatari government, we want freedom of association. We want an end to the slavery system, an end to the kafala system, where you are, in fact, the property of an employer. We want proper grievance dis dispute resolutions. And of course, we want to know that those migrant workers matter. 
that they matter with the dignity and respect of rights to which they're entitled. We know that as they build those stadiums and the contracts are being let now, that more workers will die building the stadiums than players will play on the field in 2022. So Qatar is just one example, but it's a flagship campaign for the ITUC. No World Cup in Qatar without workers' rights. You can help us. Go to equaltimes.org, sign up as a reader, because you'll read about stories for workers around the world there you won't see in the mainstream press. But also join the Action Centre. Take action on Qatar and other issues. We need your help. For the ITUC, migration is a major priority and we operate at three levels. We have a global target and that's making sure the UN takes back their responsibility for migrant rights. So at the high level meeting this year, we will indeed be there demanding that the UN takes responsibility for global management of migration based on rights. But we're also working with our affiliates and it's exciting. For domestic workers, we have 86 affiliates who've signed up. We have half of them then organising at the local level, the very workers for whom the rights that we are fighting for are, are going to actually uh, support. We have put on tens of thousands of new members for the union movement. And indeed, we have NGO partners because we know without the NGO movement, whether it's Human Rights Watch in Qatar or Amnesty, or whether indeed, of course, uh, it's those migrant workers associations who frankly have shown unions how to work with migrant workers in many, many nations, how to make sure they're at the mainstream of our unions, that they're able to access their rights because they have our support. So I'm very grateful to the NGOs who make this a life's work for them. We know that migrant workers are brothers and sisters. We know globally we have a responsibility for them. We know that we need to organise migrants. And so beyond the domestic workers, I can tell you in the informal sector, of which is now 40% of the global economic environment, we are driving an organising agenda. We want to include all workers in the family of unions, working, as I indicated, in partnership very often with NGOs who are on the ground alongside of us, sometimes before us, and indeed always willing to help. So I want you to know that the rights of migrant workers is fundamental. It's a fundamental issue for the International Trade Union Confederation. I speak for almost 180 million workers and we want more and more to see migrant workers everywhere included in our family. I thank you, unions and of course our partner NGOs for the commitment that you make to these workers in Australia, but I know in the context of your discussions in making regional advances and of course standing behind the global rights environment that they deserve and we must support them in, a, in our collective endeavour to deliver. So to the UN, to regional governance structures, to national governments we say migrant workers matter. They matter. They make a contribution, 87% of their income goes to building the economies in which they work. Thousands and thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of migrants will become citizens in many, many countries around the world. And that's critical to maintaining and building the population base. But so important is the families of these migrants in the countries of origins their lives are often very, very desperate and we need to make sure that their capacity to survive in very impoverished situations is possible because the migrant workers contributing to our economies, to our societies, have fair wages and conditions and can in turn, in solidarity, help their families and others. Thank you again. Good luck. I really look forward to the outcome of these discussions and uh, you need to know that we are there 100%. Solidarity.